right? Or would I lie to you? He's got an ology. It's David Baddiel. That deserves an apology. It's Maury Lippman. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, I don't believe it. It's Jimmy Carr. Now that's out of the way. Here's Richard Wilson. And their team captain, Lee Mack. But first, imitate a gas leak and bring the house down for your host, Angus Deaton. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with more fibs than Pinocchio updating Jonathan Aitken's Wikipedia page. <laughs> of course, the most common place to lie is on a CV, and I should know, speaking as NBC's leading weatherman for the past 12 years. <laughs> and people have a tendency to try and appear more intelligent by claiming to have read books they haven't read, or in the case of Jordan, to have written books they haven't read. <laughs> so after much thought, consideration and a power planning meeting, it was decided we should start with round one, Home Truths. Our panellists take it in turn to uh, read the card in front of them. This may contain a true fact or a load of nonsense that we've just made up on their behalf. Uh, the other side then sift through the evidence, deduce the real truth and generally try and look like they know what they're doing. Uh, Maureen is the first to stick her head above the parapet, so uh, Maureen, if you would. Okay. Surprise us all. Yes, I once worked as part of a circus double act which was called Franco and Tutti. Uh, professionally? Yep. You got paid for it. I did. So what was the double act called again? Franco and Tutti. And you were? Franco. Can you describe the act? Yeah, I was the ringmaster and she pretended to be all numbers of animals. All numbers of animals? All numbers? Yeah. Well, like what? Well, she pretended to be an elephant. She pretended to be a prancing horse. Right. Uh, Lee, this line, we're not trying to book the act. We're just trying to... <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Um, I was 14. She was 12. It was child labour. It was... <laughs> but when I said professional, we did it on stage, somewhere up north in the pantomime. Whereabouts we up north? In Hull. You so said that as, I'm the expert on the north. <laughs> <laughs> there is a place called Hull. This sounds like it might be true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd won this thing to go on the panto. You won a competition to go to Hull? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what was the second prize? No, Death. <laughs> so you weren't paid for it? Yes, we were. You were paid How for Well, we were given food. <laughs> <laughs> what what happened? Were you given, like, buns when you were an elephant? <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was the name of the panto? The panto was just your traditional Cinderella pantomime. And how many and shows? Royal Not that traditional, cos in the no. middle of it, a ringmaster came on <laughs> and a girl dressed as an elephant and then a donkey. No. The old traditional pantomime of Cinderella. <laughs> In pantomime, Lee, yeah. they, do, they do mess around with the story a bit. They don't just... Not, yeah, they do, but not in traditional pantomime, they don't. <laughs> yes, they do. In the story of Cinderella, oh, I used to there's run... no bloke dressed as a woman. You know, in the, in the fairy tale, pantomime it, itself is already screwing around with the story. <laughs> Are you so telling... having a little bit of a circus bit, it's just a bit of fun. I saw a panto, they had a laser light show. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Richard? I think she's changed her story. She said she was being paid for it initially. It was yeah. professional. But it was a professional show. Yeah, but she might show. be telling the truth, but getting a bit confused. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's Maureen Lippmann. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think, team well, captain? I'm saying it is a lie. It's Maureen, a... gospel or garbage? It is, in fact, a lie. It is a lie. <laughs> Uh, yep, it's a lie. Maureen was not uh, part of a circus double act called Franco and Tutti. Uh, a recent report cleared circuses of being cruel to animals, but found them guilty of cruelty to audiences. <laughs> uh, many feel that there's no need to pay £20 to see people falling over each other, throwing knives and wearing ridiculous amounts of makeup when you can just visit Basildon on a Friday night. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Jimmy, your turn to shock us all. All right, OK. Um, oh, there you go. Um, I had an interview at MI5 to be a spy. <laughs> Uh, where's MI5, Jimmy? Where's MI5? Yeah. Well, it was, it's on the South Bank now, but that building wasn't finished at the time. So it was a, a meeting in Millbank. What was it? Like a planning meeting to join MI5? <laughs> like a planning? No, I wasn't going to be... I wasn't <laughs> like going to build the, a new headquarters. The fact the building wasn't finished. We're thinking of setting up a big organisation <laughs> of spies. Well, you know... Lots <laughs> of guns and handcuffs <laughs> and, and itching powder. We don't know how we're going to use that, but it's all fun. And we're building a huge, crazy building on the South Bank, which is actually MI6, but never mind. <laughs> 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 
Can I say I'm worried now that you know a bit much about it and you really do seem like a spy, I think, because you're, yeah. you're posh and a tiny bit gay, even though you're not. <laughs> well, hang on, David. I'll oh, stop you there. Posh and a little bit gay. <laughs> What are you talking about, man? This is like Spartacus. No, I'm posh and a little bit gay. <laughs> You're the least posh and a little bit gay of anyone in the world, Emily. Yeah. Fuck off, you puff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, right. Um, Jimmy, how, does, how do you get approached? How did you get approached for this uh, I got approached by uh, an English tutor at uh, Cambridge, and this guy, uh, McKendrick, approached me and said, would you be interested? Kendrick? In McKendrick. 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 Or M, for sure. <laughs> I thought you meant it was John McCrick approaching. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He'd be a really bad spy. <laughs> I'd say kill him when you get the chance. <laughs> the thing is, Jimmy, if I'm right about you, you were, a, you were a virgin until you were about 27, as far as I remember. 26. 26. And that was the last series of this show. So, Shall we not bring it up again? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. This was your opportunity to pull. Jimmy, how much are we going to be paid for it? Uh, I, I don't think... We'll get we paid no... in, in sticky buns, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> A sticky bun for every kill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would, you, would you be sent abroad? Well, don't you start. I'm having enough trouble with them. <laughs> Why are you, you're not even That's in this. Show. What are you talking about? <laughs> Jimmy, your, your, your attitude under interrogation is just a bit churlish, which, as a spy, it really shouldn't be, you know. <laughs> the other interrogator starts asking questions and you go, are you in this? <laughs> <laughs> is this during the Cold War? Yeah, I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> you might be. Your hair's dyed. So. <laughs> Fashion tips from the tramp. <laughs> now, now, girls. Um, was there a practical side to the interview? Did you have to... <laughs> yeah, I had to fuck a girl in a speedboat. <laughs> David Mitchell, uh, what are you thinking as team captain? I think it's not true. OK, I, well, I, I'm, I'm torn, but both of my teammates think it's not true. You're we'll tending with, towards... We'll go with that that's a lie. OK, they're saying it's a lie. Jimmy, is that the truth? It's a lie. Can I just say, Jimmy, you've made that really hard for yourself. It says I once had an interview at MFI. <laughs> Yes, well deduced. Uh, it is a complete lie. Uh, Jimmy did not have an interview uh, at MI5 to be a spy. Uh, but these days, to be a successful spy, you need dedication, nerves of steel, and the ability to spot a radioactive teapot in a sushi restaurant. <laughs> and lastly, David Badil, your uh, intriguing information. Uh, I have snogged two of the Spice Girls. I don't think you've snogged two girls. <laughs> Which two, David? Which two? Scary Spice and Sporty Spice. Mel C and Mel B. Well, that's a very... I put the Spice Girls in order and no one starts with those two. <laughs> <laughs> was it together at the same time? Or yes, it was. was. It? You snogged them the both same at the same time. time. Yeah. 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 I, say, I don't like the word snog. What I say is I went to bed with two of the Spice Girls. As it was, obviously, I just snogged them. But I so like to leave what, that did open. little David let you down? <laughs> I think it's definitely true. No further questions. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit strange, actually, because, to be honest, I was only really interested in Melanie B, who I'd been having... It was at the Four Seasons Hotel in Los Angeles, and I'd been having a bit of a flirtation with her. Yeah. Basically, I, I did end up with Melanie B in, in my room, and then Melanie C just kind of turned up. I don't, I don't know why at all. I presume if you want to be my lover, you've got to get with my friend. I don't know. <laughs> right? But right. she did just turn up. And then the, they, I was sort of snogging them, and <laughs> then the phone rang, and it was security. And the security said, we've had a lot of complaints about noise in your room. We're sending someone up to chuck you out. So I chucked them out of my room. What year was this? 1996. And what were you doing Hang in on, Los 96. Angeles? 96. Were, were they not big in 96? No, just it was early in 1996. So what are you thinking about this one, team? I think it sounds perfectly plausible. I think David Badil may well have, have got off with a Spice Girl. Mm. Richard? I think there's a lot of detail there, and I tend to say I believe that. <laughs> As opposed to I don't believe it. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who wasn't thinking it? <laughs> team I, captain. I think, I'm not going to lie, I think you're both wrong. David is a famous person. If he'd have snogged both Mel B and Mel C. It's not the first time he's talked about it. it would have, I would have read that somewhere. 
I'm going to say that he's lying and overrule you. OK, well, and... get, get Richard to say it. <laughs> get him to say I don't believe it. Go on. Go on, ask him. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. It'll be my best thing ever. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Please say, please say. Angus, I would like to give my decision by handing it over to, to Richard Wilson. What right. would you... What would you... <laughs> say <See> you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a catchphrase as well, which is, I think you're a lying, scruffy bastard. OK. <laughs> David, tell us all. It's true. <laughs> Two of the Spice Girls. It is true. Yes. In case you didn't catch it, uh, David has snogged uh, two of the Spice Girls. Just three more to go, and he gets to keep the set. <laughs> uh, this, of course, gives David a girl group hit rate of 40%. Uh, impressive, but still slightly behind Lembit Opic, who's currently on 50. <laughs> Our next round is Ring of Truth, which has been described as both simple and subtle. Uh, the people describing it as simple being correct. I dish out a celebrity fact. Uh, Lee's team, guess if it's true. Nothing could be more entertaining. After this frighteningly genuine travel guide from NBC. Scotland is the place where the pipes scurl, the men wear kilts, and everybody drinks scotch whiskey and talks with a funny accent. One of their traditions is fighting. Normally friendly, they can, when riled, fight and kill with anything from swords to sidearms. And the only thing certain is, they'll never bite you to death. Scots eat almost all the time, and they prefer something sweet. Ice cream or candy or pastries, anything with a high sugar content. They munch constantly. The national characteristic of Scotland is a moving jaw. Could I, I just say I take that as an insult on behalf of the Scottish nation? It's Boulder Dash, and I want that man's name. <laughs> well, I think that's Why disgusting. You, this is your chance. Why don't you say. Oh, I just want That's your chance. Say it now. No! <laughs> Is there a question to go with that, or are we just agreeing? Because I agree with everything that was said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is a question. So, um, that was the uh, NBC show Weekend from 1974. Uh, shortly after recording that film, the narrator actually met a Scotsman, and now he has no teeth. <laughs> uh, OK, so here is the related fact for Lee's team. After a visit to Scotland, Paris Hilton demanded her PA only ever speak to her with a Scottish accent. Her PA resigned. Is that true, Lee's team? I, I don't think. I, I mean, firstly, I don't yeah. think Paris Hilton's got a PA because well, I think she probably just. She seems quite down to earth to me. She probably just. <laughs> <laughs> she probably just organises some stuff herself, doesn't she? Does it all herself? Yeah. Uh, wow. Yes, this was something that she said um, after visiting Edinburgh last year. It's a beautiful accent, isn't it? It's amazing kind of pronunciation. But so she might have kind of. But she's well, a fucking would, idiot. Why yeah, would she? Why would she... <laughs> She and also, it wouldn't make, because I'm guessing that the purpose of it is to, because she probably thinks, well, I've been to Scotland, it sounds very cultural and interesting, I want my PA to speak like that, but that's only fine if you're not, I mean, the kind of job she's got, her PA is going, right, you've just had Playhouse asking if you can get your tits out. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good accent? No, it was terrible. Was it? <laughs> um, so, Lee, what are you thinking on this one? Jimmy? I th I, you know, I think an accent is a really sexy and important thing. I think accents are, are like lovely, and that's sort of kind of what draws you. I think that might be true. Well, it's just so unlikely it might be true. You think it's true? Yeah. Well, once again, I would like to overrule you. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm going to go with the majority this time. We'll say it's true. Should have overruled. It's a lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. It's completely untrue. Paris Hilton's PA did not resign after being ordered to speak uh, with a Scottish accent. Being Paris Hilton's PA, it would certainly be a demanding job, what with all the organising and holding the camcorder steady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which means at the end of that round, it's uh, David's team who are cock a hoop, charging ahead 3 1. Our next round goes by the Blakely Cattail title of This Is My. Uh, Lee's team will each claim to have a connection with tonight's mystery guest. Davis' team must then analyse the three claims and sort the genuine wheat from the fraudulent chaff. So let's meet uh, this week's special guest person, Della. <laughs> Uh, so, Richard, what is Della to you? Uh, this is Della, and Della and I danced on my dancer size fitness video. 
Okay, Lee, perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Della. This is Della, uh, the estate agent who accidentally locked me in a house after a viewing. Right. And finally, Jimmy, your relationship this with... This is Della, and she is Della. my chiropodist. Right. So there you have it. A uh, dancer-sized partner to Richard, a forgetful estate agent, if we believe Lee, or a chiropodist uh, to the stars, or at least Jimmy. Um, <laughs> David's team. Can I ask Richard something, Richard? The exercise video that you made, did it sell well? No. <laughs> That's obviously a lie, because you've never made a, an exercise video. And what, what was it called, this exercise video? Um, <coughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> uh, a dance... I don't believe da you made Richard one. Wilson's Learn Dancing video. That's not... <laughs> That's really not That's a steady title, is it? Do you know what, though? If that had been made, I would be the first <laughs> one to click it. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. So catchy. But also, um, I thought it was a dancer it? size video. Yeah. So, so it's actually using dance to get fit, not learning the foxtrot. No, no, I didn't do foxtrot. We did um, jive, we did uh, boogie woogie. Uh, <laughs> oh, say that last one again. Boogie woogie. Uh, <laughs> and we did a, a whole range of dances. And the idea was to get young people interested in dance and get them exercising. Well, you're the perfect man to get young people interested in dance. <laughs> that was some time ago. Were you in the video with Della, or was it just you, Della was your teacher? No, no, Della wasn't. Della was one of the dancers. And you say it was some time ago that you did this video. It's so, about um, 57 I don't know why we argue about this. It was called the Richard Wilson <laughs> Dance Yourself. <laughs> Obviously, no, it's no, a lie. No, it wasn't called <laughs> Dance Yourself anything. It was called the Richard Wilson Learn Dancing. <laughs> I'm not quite sure of the title, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so what's wrong with your feet, Jimmy? Uh, I pronate. I beg your pardon? <laughs> I, I pronate. I've got extraordinarily flat feet, uh, so I have to wear orthotics and I get kind of weird what? bunions. Speak properly. <laughs> orthotics? Ortho I get, I've got these little builds in my shoes, so I've got these little things that I have to wear in my shoes, otherwise my Achilles tendons kind of give out. It's a weird kind of... I've got weird bunions, yeah. Whoa, you know all the chat-up lines, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got some weird bunions, baby. <laughs> What does she do for you? She, she makes those little things for my feet and then she kind of... I get very rough skin because I have to wear these things and then she kind of deals with that. I'm a bit confused by the fact that Della here not only makes your orthotics but also rubs your rough bits. <laughs> as in chiropodist. So, which is she? Well, she's both. She's got a uh, chiropody, uh, I guess, some sort of qualification. There's something on the wall. She was in the Yellow Pages. Right. I'm guessing she's qualified. Mm. And, and is that how you came across her, through the Yellow Pages, or did someone recommend her? I got a recommendation. From? Right. I, all right, I got a recommendation from Simon Cowell off of The X Factor. So you got a recommendation from Simon Cowell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we were on... Uh, uh, Simon and I were on holiday together. So you're on holiday with Simon... Not Every with day, him. We, we were sea. in the same hotel. We weren't, we weren't arm in arm. Where? Uh, Barbados, Sandy Lane. Well, how often do you have this done with Della? It's maybe once a year. Does it set you back a little bit? <laughs> no, it's not, not too bad. No, I'm doing very well, thanks. Oh, good. <laughs> Della, I have to say, is, is attractive, and I hate to think of her near Jimmy Carl's feet. <laughs> <laughs> the estate agent possibility. Yes. Take us through being locked into I, um, the house. I was it was one of these open days where you show lots of people around at the same time. Someone was showing people around, uh, and then he left as I went to the top floor. Meanwhile, right. Della comes in. There's lots of people been coming and going. The last few go. I'm still up there looking out the, at the vista, and uh, she simply goes, leaving me locked within said premises. Well, how did you get out? Well, I didn't have my mobile phone on me. The phones in the house weren't working because it had been empty for a while. I ended up going out through the uh, Velux thing, the window in the attic, opened it, went down onto a flat roof next door, got down and Bob's your uncle. What did you then do in order to get in touch with... Did you, you, there you are. Oh, I used a the... really bizarre technique. <laughs> I went round to a estate agent and said, what the fuck are you doing locking me in? <laughs> so you did, you did I didn't end up getting the house. You didn't buy it? Somebody bid higher than me. So you can either go for uh, Richard's fellow dancer sizer, uh, Lee's careless property agent, uh, or Jimmy's female foot specialist. We're so not. Um, we're not going. I don't think we're going for Richard's no. dancer size video. <laughs> I don't know. It could be. I hope it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jimmy, that w has definitely got something dodgy in his shoe there, and it, you know, as well as his, his foot. <laughs>
and Lee's story is quite, he's got, it's quite a full story, he's thought about he's it. he's given far too, too much, much detail. detail, so therefore I think it must be true. I think it's Jimmy. You, you, you're going with I'll still go with Lee, Lee and you're going with Jimmy. So you decide. I'm going to, I think it's Jimmy. OK, you're saying it's Jimmy. Well, yeah. perhaps Stella would like to reveal her own identity. Um, I dance with Richard in his dance. <laughs> Yes, mm. yeah, yes, Stella like is indeed Richard's Jimmy. video dance partner, <laughs> and proof, if proof were needed. <laughs> when they told me you can relieve stress, tension, keep fit, and learn to dance, I thought. I don't believe it. So, if you're in a job at a party or at home, put on some music and dance away your cares. So, let's dance. <laughs> Congratulations, Adela, and thank you very much for joining us. And so we come to our final round, quickfire lies, more truths and lies, but this time against the clock. Lee's team are currently behind, uh, so have one last chance for redemption, starting with <coughs> David Mitchell. <clears throat> I used to buy my gran a chocolate orange every Christmas until I found seven of them in a drawer at her house. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a chilling moment. <laughs> What were you doing rummaging through your Nana's drawers? <laughs> what were you looking for? There's no bras in here. <laughs> no bras in oranges. <laughs> I've painted a horrible picture there, yeah. David. I can only apologise. I was fetching a packet of cigarettes for my grandfather. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why does your granddad keep his cigarettes in your grandmother's drawer? It was... It, it was... Pardon? <laughs> Sorry, did you? There's a glitch in the Matrix. There was... <laughs> it was in their bedroom. He used to keep his cigarettes in an item of furniture called a tall boy. And uh, I would go and... This was when I was sort of, uh, I don't know, 11 or 12. I would go and fetch them for him so he didn't have to go upstairs. And I found at the back of the drawer these seven chocolate oranges. Aww. They what did you do after the discovery? Confront her. Uh, Shut her. I, I don't... <laughs> uh, no, I didn't do anything. I didn't buy her any more chocolate oranges. Did you not mention it to her? No. Were you devastated? I, I felt a bit bad. Mm. Yeah. Is this sounding convincing? <laughs> I, I don't think it's true at all, because I don't think she'd keep them all lined up neatly in a drawer like some weird psycho horror film. <laughs> You've watched some very tame horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the row of confessionary... <laughs> Of date. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Richard? I say a lie. Jimmy? I think it's true. Well, I'm going for age and experience and saying that I agree with Richard and saying that that is a lie. I'm saying well, it's a lie. That, it is, in fact, a lie. Yay! Next. Lee. I have been attacked by a snake charmer and his snake. <laughs> well, that seems unlikely because a snake charmer doesn't need to attack you as well as his snake. If he's a snake charmer, he just goes <laughs> and the snake attacks you. Why would he bother to attack you as well? Snake yeah, when, when, did the, when did the encounter happen? It happened in Morocco. In that was Morocco. so in, said. In, first country with snakes in it. That comes to my head. Morocco. It happened in Morocco, in North Africa. What kind of snake was this? Did it have a flat-headed cobra or a? Well, I don't remember the name of the snake. Not the name. I don't <laughs> want to know if it's called Betty or something. I don't, I, it's not that I don't remember it. I can picture it clearly now. Describe yeah. the snake. Right. No legs. <laughs> uh, it seems to be all tail. Yeah. Colour. So what colour? I don't remember. It was a it sort of like greeny colour. Greeny colour snake. Green, a, a grass green. snake. <laughs> they often have charm, the magnificent grass snake. <laughs> <laughs> Over a foot in length. <laughs> <laughs> no more yes. 
fearsome reptile has ever been seen on the dusty streets of Morocco. Yeah, because what happened was a man no ran at us with a snake, starts hitting us with this snake like that, he and we all turn to each other and go, oh, what kind of snake is that? <laughs> <laughs> when were you in Morocco? What's going on? We went to Morocco in uh, 1989. Who, who's we? we? We, you and... We, us three. Oh, three. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me and three friends. There's no point saying who, you won't know who they are. Why did the snake attack you? Because we were uh, taking photographs. You know what, I don't need to know, you know what a photograph is. Richard, we were taking a photograph, right? <laughs> and, um... <laughs> and, uh... They didn't like you taking a photograph? I they didn't like us taking the photograph. He didn't like the fact that we hadn't then volunteered our, some money for that. And right. subsequently chased us. Uh, well, this is obviously not true. <laughs> Why? Because it's bollocks. <laughs> I think it's true. I do think it's not true. I think it's not true. Well, I, I think we're going to go with lie. Lee, tell us the truth. It is, in fact, true. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next, uh, David Badil. All right, this just says possession on it, which means that there's something here which is mine. Ooh, shoes. Yes. And this is it. Uh, this is the, the neck brace I wore once just to get an upgrade on a flight. Was there anything the matter with your neck at the time? No. And you just wore that to get... Definitely true. I know you. It's bound to be true. <laughs> I can speak for your character. That sounds exactly the kind of thing. I'm amazed you weren't in a wheelchair at the time, frankly. <laughs> so you took it with you for that purpose? Yes. Did it work? Yes. Uh, where was your seat? Was that in club or economy? Uh, it was originally in club, and I got upgraded to first class. Could you just slip it on, just so that yeah, we can, can see how... I can slip it on. Yeah. Vulnerable you look. How does it look? Hang on, this is the face I did as well. You just look like a vicar. <laughs> <laughs> did you keep it on for the entire flight? Uh, yeah, I did, I did. I was too worried. Did you take it off? taking yeah. it off. What did you tell the stewardess was wrong with you? I didn't, she didn't ask what was wrong what with me. What about the person you were sitting next to? Didn't they ask what you'd done? It was a while ago now. I mean, oh, I think the bloke with the did. plaster cast legs. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me either, mate. <laughs> the, whole of, the whole of first class. <laughs> 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 I imagine there was a guy. Where's the toilets, mate? <laughs> I imagine there was a guy. I think, I, I think they did ask, and I think my story was that I'd got very bad whiplash from a car accident. So, Lee, what are you thinking? I you don't know. I, see, I would have thought this was a, 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 a lie, but... What do you think, Richard? I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? I think, I think it's true. I think it sounds true to me. You think it's the truth? I... What do you think, Mr Bedeal? <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever actually tried that tactic, have yeah, they? Think... If, David, if you were us, what would you say? Uh, I would you... say it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Does that help at all, Lee? It's definitely yeah. true. He couldn't have thought right. of a double bottle. Because that obviously means, um... <laughs> I think it's a lie. It is a lie. Oh. Yeah. Well done, Mr. Wilson. Ah. <laughs> uh, which, uh, ill-mannered buzzing means at the end of the show, it's, uh, well, Lee's team, who are tonight's Golden Girls, having outclassed David's team 6-5. <laughs> <laughs> And we leave you with news that, according to research scientists, if a person's eyes move to the left, they're retrieving factual information. If they move to the right, then they're lying. If they move to the left, then the right, then the left, then right, left. The chances are they're watching tennis. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>